good morning to you all and thank you for the opportunity um, to have me on to um, share a little bit about my work, um, of course, and for the introduction. Um, I do want to uh, just mention that it was cascading right uh, to my uh, most relevant or current role, which I play with in Sanidi, which is the South African Energy Efficiency Development Institute. And currently I am um, fulfilling the role of a project manager um, within the energy efficiency program, looking um, after what we call energy efficiency appliance standards and labeling. And it's quite integrated with other um, aspects of energy efficiency. So just bringing you right up to the title head of my presentation. Yes, that looks correct. Um, I'm going to be talking you through the importance of energy efficiency in addressing the energy crisis. Um, so thank you once again for, for the opportunity. <clears throat> Welcome. All right, so Good just to get us, um, it's going to navigate my cursor, thank you so much. All right, so to give an introduction of the organization I um, represent, which is Sanedi. Sanedi is an agency of the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy, and we're established through the Energy Act to direct and monitor um, energy-related research, as well as to promote energy efficiency throughout the economy. And we do this um, through various ways within the organization, ensuring that we conduct research that informs um, policy decisions within the energy sector, and also um, engaging in um, facilitating the development of technologies that will help us to resolve some of the energy issues that we are currently facing. We also generate a lot of data um, through the energy that we conduct. And so um, we have a data management process that we undergo to ensure that we are sharing information and um, engaging the public, various um, stakeholders, as well as beneficiaries of the work that we do to ensure that data and knowledge is getting out to them. Um, capacity building is also crucial to ensure that we are building technical skills in the industry, particularly when you talk about transition, we're speaking of introducing new faces of energy solutions um, each time they, they avail themselves. And so the sort of emerging um, market that we, we find ourselves operating in really requires an upskilling and, and consistent uh, capacity building. We have a strong project management model, and so we um, engage in various projects that are tackling different areas of um, the, the energy landscape. And so I'm just covering energy efficiency today, but uh, Senedi does engage in, in quite a broad number of projects to cover the entire um, energy spectrum. Um, we also engage in demonstration and pilot projects as part of our work, testing technology, getting information and data from um, our outcomes, as, as well as informing different opportunities for commercialization and really building industries um, in the sector. Of course, awareness creation becomes very important in terms of what we do, because as we develop technology, as we um, hone ideas, it's very important to communicate um, what it is that we are doing and what solutions are available to the public to assist um, the, the country in meeting its energy um, efficiency and energy related um, goals and targets. So in, in terms of energy, um, I won't delve too deep into the concept, uh, but I think scientifically we understand energy as the ability to do work. But what energy really is, especially for um, you know, developing countries, is that it's an enabler. And so it becomes so important that we ensure that we are um, doing energy correctly, providing it correctly, and promoting efficiency and how it is that we generate, distribute, and use um, energy. I think uh, Ms. Moleshe has done justice in her presentation. I, I found it so insightful, I almost forgot I was presenting today. <laughs> so um, she's extensively touched on the integrated resource plan um, quite well. So I won't go too deep into this, um, but what I do want to point out is the envisaged energy mix that we would be looking to achieve 
um, through the integrated resource plan. Of course, um, we may be aware that a new integrated or an updated integrated resource plan will be launched soon. And so this just um, shows us that this is the energy mix that we are looking to um, promote going forward and really to develop technologies within the space. Um, the reason why I touched on energy efficiency not just being a, a final or end goal in terms of consumption of energy itself, but it becomes very crucial that efficiency is also considered um, from the source of energy. Um, and so one of the programs we actually are, are delving into at Zanedi looks at cleaner coal, because we know that that's still going to be um, a big part of our energy mix. And then we are looking to explore at technologies that are going to make coal a bit more um, sustainable and um, less harmful um, to the environment. And so it becomes important to, to also look at the processing um, efficiency of each of these sources. Um, moving on to, to maintenance, which I think was also touched on very um, extensively and quite well in the previous presentation. Um, if we are not paying attention to, to maintenance and, and scheduling time for maintenance, of course, we've experienced load shedding, so we all know how um, this, this now works and that it ends up being at an inconvenient time and end up being forced to um, shed the load in order to be able to get more um, energy or electricity, rather, to, to get around. So it's very important that we um, look at how we can um, create efficiencies in the maintenance um, landscape as well. Um, really, the legacy of inefficiencies within this area has taken away from the opportunity to channel investments towards um, transition and towards leapfrogging technology that can enable us to, to overcome some of the issues that we face today. So it becomes highly important to, to see how we also create um, efficiencies in the way that we do um, the operations aspect of providing um, energy. So just delving more into the crux of my presentation, um, in addition to the IRP and other national um, policy documents, uh, within energy efficiency, we are led by the National Energy Efficiency Strategy, which was developed in 2005 by the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy. And they then later developed uh, a target uh, monitoring system to um, track progress of all the energy efficiency targets that are put in place. Um, government does have various interventions within energy efficiency that are being implemented to meet these targets. And I'll touch on some of them um, a bit later in my presentation. But you can already see um, the, the improvements that have been achieved since setting initial goals in 2025 over a 10-year a period. Um, we've seen 15% um, energy efficiency created within, industri within the industry and mining, 10% within the residential sector, 15% um, in commercial and, and public um, sector sectors as, as well as 9% in transport and, and even 15% in the power sector. So we do see that um, energy efficiency definitely has a place. Um, many refer to it as a first fuel or a long hanging fruit when it comes to, to looking at areas um, and ways in which we can save energy. Um, it really is cross-cutting. Um, it's not just a, an electricity issue. And, and as I demonstrated earlier, that efficiency can be achieved across all sources of energy um, and fuels. So after the, the initial um, national energy um, efficiency strategy was uh, reviewed, um, we have gone into what we call a post-2015 uh, national energy efficient strategy. And I think the success of the initial document and, and the successful implementation of that, having met the targets I demonstrated in my previous slide, um, has then led government to setting more ambitious targets um, for what we can achieve by 2030. So we're talking about a 50% reduction in energy intensity in the public sector, a further 20% um, 
in, in municipalities. Um, we're looking at a 20% reduction um, in, in um, energy performance of residential buildings. So that's double it in size um, and also 37% reduction in um, the consumption of, of energy in the commercial sector. And lastly, 16% within manufacturing. So just specifically looking at energy efficiency, I believe we understand this to mean that we are wanting to use less energy to provide the same service or the same amount of work or output. And so um, it becomes very important um, to realize that reducing the amount of energy um, required to provide a, a service is something that we need to always be striving towards if we're going to try and counter the increasing um, demand for electricity in the country and hence try to alleviate the impacts of the crisis that we we currently find ourselves in and what you you see sort of the high level benefits of um, um, energy efficiency being is that um, it, it can result in moderate temperatures, um, low humidity and increased um, air quality, um, uses less energy, costs less. And by cost, we mean it costs the, the state less, but it also costs people less. And we can meet our um, goals for reducing uh, greenhouse gas emissions. We realize in our work that um, energy efficiency is is really a multi-layered um, approach that we need to take. It's, it requires extensive behavioral change, particularly when you're introducing new energy efficiency technologies um, or ways of um, communicating with your beneficiaries, whether it be the industry, building owners or consumers of appliances that they plug into their walls and their homes. And so it becomes very crucial that we are creating awareness um, on certain behaviors that will need to be facilitated um, as we transition. Um, the way in which we do operations, the hardware that we need, even software, um, are all areas where technologies uh, can be introduced to create greater um, efficiencies. Then this is just a very interesting slide that I think um, demonstrates um, potential um, use and even savings of, of energy within the home. Um, I think sometimes we don't realize how much all these appliances that we plug in and um, you know tools that we sort of use to get on with life are actually um, load uh, are actually a load on the grid, and so it's very important for for us to be cognizant of how much electricity they use. Um, this information is provided through what we call an energy efficiency label. Buildings also are starting to have energy efficiency label and I'll, labels, and I'll elaborate this a bit later. It becomes very key for us to pay attention to the fact that products are not made the same. And so a lot of them uh, are made in more efficient ways or in a way that they will not be using as much electricity. And so it's important to pay attention not just to the price um, competitiveness of an appliance, but also its energy use. Um, as, as I'm sure most of us have experienced, that when you get an appliance for your home, you can even have it up to 10. I've even spoken to people who have had appliances in their homes for 15 years. So you want to ensure that you're making an investment that is going to um, that is going to enable you to use electricity more efficiently. Just speaking to the previous slide, um, what we do at Senedi that also uh, contributes to ensuring that we are getting high energy performing appliances into the South African market is that we work with the national regulator to set what we call minimum energy performance standards um, for various electric products that are coming in um, into the country. This is a huge import market. And so if, if these products are not regulated, we, we risk um, having technologies or older um, technologies being dumped in, in South Africa. And because South Africa is also a gateway into other African countries, it becomes very important that we establish the, the concept of setting minimum energy performance standards for um, electric and electronic goods. 
And so um, this assists us um, to also make sure that we are protecting South Africans in terms of what's available for them to consume um, in the market. And, and it also does gravely assist with um, ensuring that we reduce the um, amount of electricity that is, is used within our buildings. Then just another um, area of you know, potential savings, I'm just going to, to emphasize that when we implement minimum energy performance savings, and then in addition to that, you have consumers being aware of the energy efficiency label and actually using it to, to make their purchases. If you have um, companies that are actually implementing energy efficiency um, interventions for their commercial buildings and so forth, we can realize um, quite a large amount of savings um, through various appliances, equipment, um, and tools that we, we use that require electricity. So this is just to really give you a picture of some of the um, electrical savings energy potential um, that is available from um, switching out to um, more efficient products. ESCOM also has um, quite an extensive awareness creation program. So we've um, also put that in the forefront because I think um, they're doing a lot of work in this area. So we complement this work and try not to duplicate it. Um, that's why I've just sort of highlighted these slides here to show you the, the type of awareness that is being created already by government um, to, to help um, South Africans be able to buy into some of the um, smarter and more energy efficiency technologies um, for their homes, for their businesses, et cetera, because this all makes a difference. And I think the power is in numbers. So the more people and businesses we can get to um, buy into the energy efficiency programs that we run, um, the greater of um, energy savings that we, we get out of our work. So looking specifically into Senedi, currently um, these are some of the energy efficiency projects that we have running. Um, I've mentioned that we are implementing the Energy Efficiency Appliance Standards and Labeling Program. We've got the Energy Efficiency 12th L Tax Incentive. Um, we also look at energy performance certificates for buildings, um, cool surfaces, Exco markets, as well as um, industrial energy efficiency projects. So I'll just delve into a few. Um, standards and labeling for, for appliances is a project that I am directly um, responsible for. On the right of your screen, you see the energy label that I alluded to earlier. We're currently in the process of reviewing this label and it's going under redesign and will be launched um, to South Africans uh, before the end of the year. We will do it on a product by product rollout. Currently, we are starting with um, refrigerants and, and air conditioners. So the revision we are looking to do is to take the model to a simple A to G rating as opposed to the A triple plus to D that you do see on your screen. This is just so that we are able to harmonize the various labels that are available for different um, products. We've also been approached by the SADC region um, to have the South African label adopted for um, other countries within the SADC region. Um, the, the program we've been running is about um, 12 years mature, and we've um, learned a number of lessons um, to be able to help other African countries um, adopt the label. We're also trying to um, promote this work as part of the um, intercontinental um, trading policies that are um, strongly being implemented. And so it becomes very important that we harmonize standards and we harmonize the tools that we use to communicate energy consumption um, to, to um, Africans. So in addition to the um, products that I had shown you that we had minimum energy performance standards for in the last year, we've also gone through an expansion of the program to include um, electric mos motos limited to um, 0 0.7 to 375 kilowatts. Um, we've also um, partnered with the Collaborative Label and Standards um, Program, which is an international program, and they have introduced 
water and energy efficiency labeling standards. So that will look at taps, it will look at shower heads, as well as appliances that um, use both electricity and water. So that's a great um, integration opportunity there because uh, water and, and um, energy are really two sides of the same coin. And so we um, also expanded um, to, to creating minimum energy performance standards for electronic displays, so your televisions. Um, so I, uh, you'll very soon see labels being available for um, televisions and um, computer monitors um, in the country as well. And then street lighting is another project that is closely linked to the DMRE's um, energy efficiency demand side management pro program for municipalities. And we've just completed a cost benefit analysis and um, drafted minimum energy performance standards that we've recommended to government um, to, to strengthen this area. Another project that I'll touch on is uh, cool surfaces. Um, we're also implementing this project at Senedi. The concept is really one of an environmental friendly thermal cool surface paint, um, which reflects the sun's rays, uh, reducing um, heat um, entering your, your structures, your buildings. And this has huge um, you know, benefits and implications. Uh, particularly in communities where housing is not properly insulated. It becomes um, a very key um, safety aspect as well. But more on the energy side is that it assists, you know, this type of technology assists to ensure that it keeps the building cool. And then you aren't um, needing an energy demand to go towards um, cooling or electrical cooling within the building. Um, so the DMRE has also launched its national cooling plan in April of this year. So this type of technology becomes a crucial part of the implementation of the national cooling plan. The 12L tax incentive, which I also touched on earlier, Sanedi plays a critical role as part of this project, and we are facilitating the incentive claimant. Um, to the issuing of 12, 12L tax incentives. It's basically a kickback for businesses that um, 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 install or implement energy efficient um, interventions into their uh, buildings. Then energy performance certificates, which is very um, closely related to uh, appliances, except here we are looking at the entire building as a whole. Um, there's an audit process that goes through um, a building and you are given recommendations on how you can improve the energy efficiency of your building. Um, this is a regulation that's also been put out by government as part of their energy efficiency strategy. Once you have um, a certificate, you then display it. And I think it, it's very nice to see how much or how well or, or not that um, you would be performing in terms of your energy consumption. And so um, this is always a way to encourage um, businesses to improve. And obviously, then there are incentive opportunities as they, they do that. But more um, so, it assists us in meeting those targets, as I reflected earlier, are being met, um, I think, even exceeded. And so hence, we have um, put forward more, ambit uh, more ambitious targets um, going towards 2030. So I'll I'll leave um, you all with this slide um, as I just to highlight that I've I've mentioned very few um, energy efficiency interventions that we currently have in in the country. There's lots more, and I think there's still opportunity to um, exploit more um, energy efficiency technologies and solutions. Um, but really, energy efficiency has a potential of reducing energy consumption by thirty percent. Um, it is indeed a low hanging fruit. And it is something that should be closely paid um, at, you know, we should pay close attention to this and and really incorporate it into the broader strategy of, of saving energy. Um, it's equally as important as uh, producing cleaner sources of energy. Thank you so much for your time.